Okay, so hello everybody. We are um, reproducing uh, SAC 49988. I reproduced this before. And um, are you seeing my screen still? Okay, so I reproduced this before and I foolishly, um, somehow the recording didn't work. So we are going to uh, reproduce this. This seems like the weirdest of things. I've talked to Wilma about this and Wilma thought that she was crazy. And I thought it was going to be almost impossible to uh, reproduce. Uh, so let's go ahead and reproduce it. Uh, if you have an assignment with an external tool type, add a paragraph break to the instructions, it breaks the launch. Now, the one thing uh, that I've figured out since then is um, this is LTI 1.1 only. Uh, LTI 1.3 works although we should try that we'll just we'll just double check that to make sure that that's true before i uh yeah before i um but i believe it to be 1.3 so let's make a site work site setup create new site project site i like to make my sites be the jira Although then I screw up. I mean, I just keep using the same site. So I think we just need assignments to test this one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Let's just do assignments for now. Um, I don't think it matters, but we'll make it so that Nancy, all the Nancy Drews can join if we want. But I think this fails without even moving into administrator. Let's unpin that one. And so here we are, assignments. Ah, but let's let's log in as admin. We need some things. No, not that. So let's go into external tools. So what is this? A zap must be, that's the LTI test tool. That's an LTI 1.1 test tool that I've got. Um, if you don't have that, uh, let me figure out. So LTI test is a, this is kind of like um, get remote minus V. This is something I built probably over a decade ago. Um, and it is a really, really crude, simple LTI 1.1 only unit test. Um, and I've got it running here, localhost LTI test. And so you can check this out into your HT docs folder. Check this GitHub Sugi project LTI test, LTI dash test. You put this in your HT docs. So if you look at here, I got PWD is in my HT docs folder. It doesn't need a database. It doesn't need anything. It just needs PHP, any recent version. And it's the crudest of things, but it's a place that I can put really quick stuff and um the other the other thing that i tend to test stuff with is like um a copy of maybe, maybe python for everybody or just another sugi because it's just a place where i have a bunch of sugi tools this of course requires like most of you now have a sugi that's running and then this is my way of getting lti 1.3 things into my local Sakai. So Zap, we're going to rename this guy. Simple LTI 111 test. We'll rename it so it uh, is a little more sensible. So this is the simple, crude, simple LTI 1 1.1 test. Uh, hey, here's my new UI. This is all done. So, yep, it doesn't support. This does not support deep link. So that is correct. 
So that's Zap. So this is an LTI 1.1 store, which is based on my Pi for E thing. Now I was testing stuff appearing from placements. So you'll notice I hid all this stuff. Boom, 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 boom. I was I was making them disappear from, from the various UIs because that was a recent bug I was working on. So that's why my current test setup has got don't appear anywhere because I was trying to test what it meant to not appear anywhere. Okay, so this is an LTI 1.3 store backed by my pi for local installation. I mean, you would probably put your Sugi local installation um, there. And that looks good. I, everything except site level because site level requires a, a LTI to resource link launch. So that guy's right. Okay, so now we have the ability to place the kinds of tools that we need to place. Let's let's create an assignment and let's create one that I think is going to work. LTI 1.3, instructions. And again, these instructions are what we're gonna try to break really quick. We're gonna make it an LTI submission. Uh, we're gonna pick an LTI tool. And this time we're going to do the 1.1 tool and uh, let's just make it be the uh, breakout game for fun because this blows up. Yeah, but I'm going to make this say breakout uh, 1.1. So this is the, oh, wait a sec, crap, crap, crap. Which one did I do? Oh, I took it. This is breakout 1.1. Okay. So allow resubmission, unlimited resubmissions. I should probably make it so as soon as this is LTI, it just changes the default here to unlimited. Note to self, write a jeer about that. Uh, max points 100, make a great book item. Oof, post it. Note to self, fix that. Now that my backlog is getting lower. Um, uh, so let's then do, uh, let's do another assignment. We're gonna call this 1.3. Blah, blah, blah. Submission type, external LTI. Select it. Do this with LTI 1.3. And we'll make this be the trophy. Install the trophy tool. Trophy 1.3. Boom. Yes. Points. Uh, resubmission, unlimited, post. Now we have a 1-3 trophy, a 1-1 one, one breakout, and then let's add, just for yucks, the old school 1-1-1 one, one, one tool. I'm going to resubmission. Let's allow resubmission 100 points. Okay. So here we go. So I think we can test this just as instructor because it'll blow up. So simple LTI one point test, go to external tool, works. Trophy 1.3, go to external tool works because it's blowing up with the OAuth validation key failing. So uh, breakout 1.1 works. Okay. Now key in this is that I never put any rich text into the description. So the bug is, if you look at the bug, when you put a second second line here, it starts putting p tags into that description, right? So now I'll have to say second line. So this is trophy 1.3. 
Now, my hypothesis is this one is going to work because the LTI 1.3 serialization is using a Java web token. And so let's let's bring up our thing so we can kind of give you a quick sense of not that stuff. Window, where's the tools, web developer, there we go. Here, web developer tools, where's that at? Okay. Let's let's can reconnect this to the bottom. It makes it uglier, but at least I can use my whole screen a little better. Okay. So we got network. And I'm going to filter it on 8888. And that way I can see all of... I don't really need the console at this point. I don't think... I may need the console. We'll start with network. And I'm going to filter... Well, we may need better than that, but okay. So here we go. So this is to see all of the things that talk to the external tool, all the posts and stuff. So now we're going to see this is Trophy 1.3 with a two-line description. And it works. And so if we take a look at this, this is LTI 1.3 and it's not broken. Um, so we're posting... Let's take a look at the request. Oh no, why didn't it give me all those things? Next message. Why didn't it do OIDC login? Okay. Let's do that launch again and watch everything that happens. It's like I'm not oh 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 it's because I got H I got XHR. I'm just only seeing the XH HTTP uh there we go. Now I can filter for 88880 to make sense. Okay. So now I can launch this and see it. Yay, I got to see a bunch of stuff. So we can see the um we can see the protocol here. So these localhost 8080s, I don't know why that's not working. Um, we see these localhost 8080s, those are, this, those are requests going to Sakai and localhost 8088 are requests going to Sugi. And so, um, so the way this works is this is LTI 1.3. This is not the bug, this is working. Um, it it goes to well let's let's defilter this for a moment uh, and just look for i think html let's try that let's defilter it and look for html okay so if we walk through and we look at how what happens the moment eh, assignments we go into, no, not that one, this one, assignments. At the moment we're going to do trophy 1.3, at the moment we're going to click on this go to external URL, what's underneath that? Looks like that's a post. So I'm going to clear everything. And so what happens is, is there are these URLs. It's going to go to an event quickly. Inside Sakai in the access servlet that in effect, create the LTI launch. And so the first thing that happens, this is the tool, that's the tool, this right here, this one right here, this is content 11. And that is in effect, the, um, oh, I can't, how come it hit all my stuff? I can't see it. I want to see more. Okay. Headers. So this is going to, um, this is the access servlet. And a lot of things go through access servlets. Things like when we serve a PowerPoint from resources, they go through access servlet. 
And so content 11, literally, if you look, content 11 is the primary key right there. That is trophy 1.3. There is the description. There's all this stuff. There's all kinds of stuff. And so that content 11 that's going on right there, that says, go look up in this table, content table, not the tools table. The tools has the security for it. Content is the placement. So if you have one tool and you put it 400 times inside Sakai, and if you look at the if you look at the admin UI, you see this. You see these two tabs. So there are three tools here. And this is the number of times they are used. For each place that it's used, there is one of these little content guys. So a content is a placement of a tool, a unique placement of a tool. So you can place the document annotator a hundred times. There's only one document annotator. Actually, it's only one app store in this case. Um, and so as a foreign key, these content items have as a foreign key, a tool ID. Hello, hello, let's find your tool ID, friend. Okay. Tool ID, foreign key, value three. So that goes into LTI tools, and that means it's this tool. It was the LTI store. And what's in this tool is the stuff that is in this screen, because there's only three of them. But this is the security information, like where is the starting launch point? Uh, can we put this in lessons? All these things that are in that UI are here. And then eventually the key set, the end, OIDC endpoint, this is basically what Sugi said, launch me here. So this is the launch, this is the starting launch point for an LTI 1.3 OIDC, uh, which is a standard OAuth 2.0 standard, Open ID, Open ID Connect is what OIDC stands for. And then there's a redirect back and forth. Okay, so if we look, content 11 is the last URL in Sakai that is going to then launch all the data. But then the key here is, oh, okay. So that's a get, that's a get. Where are we at? Chuck, that's a get, yeah, don't be too confused. So then what happens is the result of this is a post. It's a post with a bunch of stuff to the OpenIDC login URL which is this guy. And then that, uh, it's kind of, there's this login flow, which bounces back to Sakai. So that's going back to this OIDC auth. It has to do with non-replay of uh, web data. So then it comes back and gives this state value and this again is coming from Sakai. So it went to Sakai, went to Sugi, Sugi sent it back. This is the OIDC login flow, sent this state back. This came from Sugi. And then con this content sends it back to Python for everybody with all this stuff. What's the request? Cookies. Request headers. Somewhere here is why am I not seeing?
Oh, then finally it goes back to Sugi. And this is the part I wanted to show you because this is again, using a Java web token, which are just awesome things. How come I can't select that? Is going to copy it and this is a serialized version the reason i'm making such a fuss about this jwt.io the reason i'm making such a fuss about this is the problem we're going to see in no 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 bugger i want the actual token get wrong okay I guess I'll do this, copy this whole thing, paste it in here. This is cool. JWTIO is a, um, did I get it all? Ah. I just want to paste this in and then edit it. I take this little ID token out because my dang browser is not being my friend. Let's hope I didn't mess this up in the cutting and pasting. Okay, are we mad? It's mad about this. Well, I don't know. Well, I think I missed something in my copy and paste, but it doesn't matter. This is the data that's in this encoded bit. And this is the LTI 1.3 stuff and who the user is and what their name is and what the signature is, yada, yada. <clears throat> so once that's done, then you actually run the trophy code. And the trophy is a set up a session with the person's name and all the grading stuff and whatever. So that's a walkthrough of an LTI 1.3 launch and the superior, absolutely superior um, encoding we have in LTI 1.3. In LTI 1.1, we have this encoding. So let's go ahead and do a breakout 1.1 and launch that and watch how that encoding works. Let me go over to admin and turn on debug. Let me edit this guy and turn on debug launch. Debug launch, save. So as a testing, you can turn debug launch on and off. And I, you could have done debug launch on the LTI 1.3 tool and it would have been a lot easier for me to find that ID token. So now we're gonna to go to the external tool and it is, uh, let's go to the tools, browser tools, web developer tools. Okay, so now we're going to launch this again, but now it's going to use an LTI 1.1 protocol here. Okay, so this went to content 10, but because we told it to pause, all this data is sitting right now in the browser. And so this, this is the bug. This is still the output of Sakai. This is the output of content 10, access LTI site content 10. Um, and so the key to LTI 1.1 is it's a bunch of post data that we then serialize. And it, I have this thing to show the launch data, but I can also um, show you what really is going up. I inspect this here. Uh, I think inspect. Okay. So what there is, is there's a hidden form here. There's a form aiming to the LTI 1.1 endpoint. And it has all these key value pairs like who the person, user ID, course ID, resource link ID, yada, 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 yada. And the thing that we're going to get in trouble with is eventually, where's the title? Oh, it's in alphabetical order. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, description. Is description got a D, C, D, E? Where's description? His description. Oh, research link description. See that? That is the thing that I think is going to burn us eventually. 
And so this is debugging, and then it sends a post. Now I can't wait too long because this has got a timestamp in it. So I'm gonna hit the, I'm gonna hit the press continue, and it worked. So if I look at the network, um, it it posts all this stuff. That all happened. Now the key thing is there is this uh, OAuth 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 signature. So there's a key and a shared secret. The secret is not sent. You serialize this whole mess on the server, add the secret, then compute a SHA, what is it? SHA1, where's the OAuth signature method? Uh, SHA1, you compute a SHA. You concatenate all this stuff in a very carefully legislated uh, serialization, then you put it in a form, you send it, and then the, then the receiving end also reconstructs it. It knows the secret, it's a shared secret, and then it compares the signature method, okay? So that's what happens when it's working. So now let's break it. I hate to break it. It's so happy. It looks so pretty. So the way we break this in LTI 1.1 is we add a second line and literally we save it and then we're going to break it it's going to break i hope that would be so ironic if it didn't break after all this build up okay let's watch it break okay so we still have all this launch data and again, the thing that's going to hurt us is this uh, description, wherever title and description are. Resource link description. Oh, look at that. See, there's your, there's our many lines of stuff, okay? That's what's going to hurt us. And we're going to press continue. And so we're going to post this data to the LTI endpoint, and it blows up. So we post this, okay, and uh, and it gets mad. It blows up, and that's because it took all this data, according to the serialization rules, and it 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 added it 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 added the secret, it and then took it took it actually takes out on the receiving end it takes the signature, removes it, serializes everything else, including the consumer key, adds the secret to the serialization, then recomputes the signature. So the signature that um, the signature that Sakai computed was uh, DC. Yeah. So the signature that was sent is DC VVTEJ. But then when Sugi reconstructed all this from the serialized data, right? Reconstructed all this from the serialized data, then it got a different signature. Now, the problem is, is there's two serializations going on. There's the OAuth serialization, and then there is the form and the form post serialization and deserialization that are happening too. And so there is in that form, so if I hit refresh here, if I do an inspect, ah, no, do a refresh. If I do an inspect element here, that's been serialized in here. Okay. That's been serialized in here. So it's posting something. And I don't know where those new lines went, right? Where'd those new lines go? I don't know. That doesn't look like a new line to me. So that might be our problem. Okay. Now, the first question we have to ask is there's two ends to this serialization. There is the coming out of Sakai, getting serialized into this form, and then there is receiving the form and serializing inside Sugi. So we got to decide if it's Sakai's fault in how it's computing the OAuth signature from this serialized data. And again, we are very suspicious of this. Okay, so the first thing to do is to verify whose fault this is. And so this is where we're going to do another tool, the simple LTI 1.1 test. And just to be clear, 
Um, go back to assignments. No, 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 go back to assignments. If we go here, this is the other, it's a completely different set of code. And this one works. But now we're going to see if, uh, let's go back and turn debug on this one. Debug on, let's turn simple LTI 1.1 test. Let's turn debug on. Let's launch into bug mode. So we can slow that launch down. Okay. So now we're going to launch this guy back. Go to external tool, show launch data. See, there you go. And where is that description? So there's the description. So this is this is the one that's going to work, and there's no new lines in it. So it's got paragraph tags. It's got tags in it, but it doesn't have new lines in it. So we're getting really suspicious right now. Really suspicious. We're going to go, and it works. Right? So if we look, we're going to see the post data. This is the post data. This is the post data that is um, been received by the LTI tool. And if we look and look at the uh, title and the uh, description. And what's cool here is I've got this thing called compare this base string. And these base strings, this is the serialization according to the rules of this is the serialization according to the rules of uh, OAuth 1.0, because LTI 1.3 uses OAuth 2.0, and this is using OAuth 1.0. And so you have these things, and you can see it's kind of like a modified, hacked up, messed up URL encoding. Or, yeah, it's kind of a hacked up. You see the percent %26s and percent %3Ds, commas, and whatever. And so... This is, this is the thing that is used if you add the secret to this, because if you look carefully, you see the key, but you don't see the signature. And so they sent the signature, they remove the signature, they serialize, they add the secret, and then compute it. These things are notoriously difficult to compare by human eyes. You can go mad. So in this tool, I built a compare this base string tool. And it actually is, this is a tool I built that actually takes the base string inside, inside the LTI tool, puts it all right there, and then we can compare that base string. So we'll come back to this. It's not broken. It's working. So let's now do it again. Let's break it. Thank you, Wilma. Second line break. Second line breaks it. Save. Okay. Now let's go into it and see if this will break. We broke it with uh, um, Pyfree and Sugi. And let's just continue. And it breaks. The same basic problem, right? So now... Um, So now what we're going to do is run this again using this particular tool makes this pretty easy. Believe me, I've been doing this for over 10 years and finding these base strings is not easy, but I made stuff in Sakai and this tool to make finding the base strings pretty easy. So let's launch it again. Let's go to the external tool and then let's inspect this. And let's find the base string. And let's copy. Uh, did I get that right? Come on, Chuck. Uh, did I screw that up? Let's re refresh it. Can I view this page source? Tell me I can. I hate you. Yeah, you idiots. Why can't you just view the damn page source anymore? It wanted to, it wanted to, couldn't log in. You just want to view the page source. Let's view frame source, see if that works. No, 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 no. I just want to view, there is source in this frame. Maybe I should use frickin' Chrome. 
really want to use freaking Chrome. Okay, I'll just use Inspect. Damn you, Firefox. Damn you, stealing my ability to do things so nice. Okay, so I'm going to grab this. No, I don't. Oh! Copy that. I'm going to put it into a text thing. So there we go. So that is because this is the Sakai debug message. This, this came from this request is Sakai. As soon as it goes to here, it's going to go to that external tool. So I'm going to grab, I put this debug thing in here so we could get a hold of the base message as Sakai has computed it, right? So this is Sakai's computation of the base message, uh, the base string. We're going to go to the external tool, blows up, but here's what's cool now. I can compare this base string. This automatically takes Sugi's base string and puts it in there. So let's take that base string from Sakai that we just got done snagging. Copy out the part that matters. Stick it in here. Now you could, if you really wanted to, you could go character by character in this and you would go mad by the time you figured out where this mismatches. And hence, I wrote a piece of software to do this for us, right? So now we have two base strings, which are being used to compute the um, serialization. Yeah. And now I can tell it to compare. And so this is where the serialization goes bad. So the top is Sakai's serialization. And the bottom is Sugi's serialization. And indeed, it's the resource link description is where it works. Um, where it fails. And so I don't know if there's a URL decoder. Let's see if I can. Yeah, whatever. Okay, go back. Go here. Okay, so I'm going to take this bit right here and see what it's really going to URL decode to. Decode. Huh? Oh, I see. So I'm going to have to decode this twice. Yeah, that's it does that. Again, this is why we don't like LTI 1.1. So now we're going to decode that. Okay. So which one was that? Which one was that? Okay. So Sakai is computing a base string based on new lines. Meaning it's 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 just taking the data that's got that includes new lines. I'm, I'm guessing this is a freaking new line thing. So let's just see what is going on with the other one. Let's decode it. Now let's double decode it. I like just double, 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 double decode it all. Decode it. That looks like new lines. So I was wondering if that new line was coming through at all. So, yikes. So I was thinking that maybe we we're going to get a blank here instead of a new line. Here. Does this work? Can I go back? Let's just decode this guy right here. No. Let's 
So that's that's Sugi's view of the universe. That's Sakai's view of the universe. Looks the same to me. Okay. Okay, so I want to, I think that there's extra characters here. So where is the new line coming here? Uh, shoot, I never screwed up my forward and back. Eh, I don't want that there either. So somewhere in here, okay. What is a HT uh, URL encode of a new line? So percent zero A is a new line. Oh, percent 25 is a percent sign, if I'm not mistaken. It's 25, right? Right, right, right. See what I'll code for? Yeah, 25. Okay. So this, see how maddening this is? Okay. So we got a percent 25, which the first URL decode means a percent zero A. Okay, and then, so here's a percent 25, and then a zero A, and this is a percent 25, zero D. <laughs> I think we see it. You may not be seeing it, but I'm starting to see it. So then what happens is this is a, percent 25 zero a and then a percent 25 zero a you are on the code table Rawr. give me a table give me a table there we go I want a table so 25 is percent new line come on new line Uh -huh. New line. So new line backslash n is percent zero a and uh okay, I think this is our problem right here. So percent third is percent thirteen. URL <sighs> encode return. Is return and new line are different? What is percent twenty six? No. What is percent twenty two? Hey, Doctor Chuck. I think you can come uh, visit the encoding table and search for percent zero A and percent zero D. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Where are we? So line feed is zero A. Line feed is zero A. And zero D is character term. Character term. Yeah. So this is freaking line end stuff. Okay. So what's happening is Sky. 
So there's a percent zero A. Oh, I see. So there is, there's a percent zero A and there's a percent zero A. So that is line feed, line feed inside Sakai. And in Sugi, it's seeing it as percent zero D percent zero A, which is a carriage return line feed. So right there is our problem. So Sakai is computing this. So we got to decide. Sakai is computing its signature inside of Java code. Inside of Java code. Eh, I think it might be a new tell. How about we do this? Grab minus R, OAuth, signature. Ah. Sakai, B, L, T, I. Okay, Sakai, L, T, I, one, three, sign. Sign, transition. Oh, signature method, yeah, somewhere in here. Somewhere in here, we are computing that OAuth signature method in um, Sky. And then somewhere else, we are compute doing the serialization. That's in Sakai BLTI util right here. We're doing that serialization of that form. Ah. The form is being produced here. And that's going to be, I think there's a, it's post launch HTML. Oops, basic LTI util post launch HTML. So that's in another tool, another file. So I think this, oops. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so right here at line 548, basic LTI util dot Java is where that serialization is going to happen. And so this is the loop right here that's going through the key value pairs to create the post data. So I think the problem is right here in this value going to HTML special characters. And the problem is, is the, so that HTML special characters is going to design to make a form safe version of the value, double quotes and all that stuff. And somehow it's not encoding slash R slash N the right way. Oh, chat, was that was that Joe telling me how to fix it? Yeah, get base string. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is all I wanted to do was reproduce it. And so I wanted to reproduce it so that 
everybody knew how to reproduce it. Uh, so I am going to stop sharing my screen. Because now, after that, I will be fixing it, right? I mean, we have chased it down. We've reproduced it. We've found the code now that's our suspicious code. And so I will stop this recording and then we will share the recording. And uh, and if folks want to attack this one, um, next Wednesday, I will fix it. I mean, I'm I'm this close to fixing it already. I mean, but if you want to go back, I mean, as a, just as an educational, educational exercise, um, go through the reproducing, follow the thing. You're going to gain a whole skill in LTI 1.1 that hopefully you'll never have to use in your whole life. But if you end up in ed tech, this LTI 1.1 crap is around. So this is code that I wrote over 10 years. Let's, oh, let's do a get blame. Shoot, I'm not sharing my screen, but I can share my screen. I got five more minutes. Let's do a get blame on this file. And see when I wrote this code. And see how long this bug has been there. <laughs> Uh, HTML. Two thousand sixteen. That can't be it. There we go. Some of the codes from two the earliest dates, right? I can refactor this, or maybe I fixed the blanks or something. But two thousand and eleven. At least, this is at least as old as 2011. So this bug. <laughs> ah, so this bug has been in the serialization code of Sakai's LTI 1.1 launch since 2011. And Wilma found it. And all she had to do was add a blank line in the description. I think part of it is that most descriptions uh, don't allow HTML or or in or people just don't put a lot of stuff in the description in a lot of LTI launches, um, and so that's that's why um, it hasn't been noticed until now. And thankfully, LTI one point three doesn't have the problem, so that's why the world is moving to LTI one point three as fast as it can. Any questions before I stop the recording? Okay, so. Here, this is the puzzle. This is the puzzle to solve. Yeah, so, a quick question. Um, yeah, sure. So the problem is the way Sugi decode the new line. Uh, the line oh, I don't think it's Sugi's fault. Right? I don't. I don't think it's Sugi's fault. Okay. I because re I wasn't even using Sugi when we blew it up. I was using my little LTI test tool from ten thousand years ago. Okay, so we are going to change the way um, how Sakai decodes. I think it's Sakai's mistake because Sakai encodes wrong, line. goes to Sugi and it blows up. Sakai encodes it wrong and it goes to LTI test and it blows up. So that places it square. And I think it is a comp. I think it really is. Sakai has an in memory string that it uses to compute the signature. Then Sakai mm -hmm. serializes that in memory string to a form field. And that, that's where it's wrong. I think that we got to change what goes in that form field. And okay. and and we are either going to throw away new lines or we're going to carefully encode them as percent whatever's, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how we're going to do that, but it's really clear that either percent zero A or percent zero D is being turned into percent zero A. Yeah. And so we're getting two percent zero A's instead of a percent A percent D, right? But that's Sakai's fault. I mean, the bottom line is... is Whatever the string is inside of Java, through two to three serializations, should get deserialized inside of PHP and be the same BAM string. Otherwise, it can't compute it. So I think the mistake is in the serialization, not the deserialization. Okay. Okay, I got you. Yeah. But the key thing here is not so much fixing it, because I'm going to guess it's going to be two lines of code at most. Yeah. Um, the key is to sort of get good at sort of 
how to find these things and reproduce them and, and whatever. Yeah, I think it, that's a good example. Yeah. In our TI tool. Yeah, it's a good sample. <laughs> it's a classic. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'll stop the recording.